But let's get to our AFL tips for round 22. So looking at it right now, we start on Friday night between Essendon and Sydney. I've gone the Swans. On Saturday, I've gone the Gold Coast over Melbourne, GWS over Fremantle, Collingwood over Brisbane, the Crows over Port Adelaide, Geelong over St Kilda. And on Sunday, I've gone the Bulldogs over North Melbourne, Hawthorne over the Tigers, and then the Blues to finish over the West Coast. Eagles. Now, my brother actually hasn't given me his tips this week. I forgot to ask him, so maybe I'll leave him in the pinned comment down below what he's tipped. But yeah, first of all, we'll talk about the Sydney Essendon game. This isn't Marvel Stadium, but Sydney have a pretty good record there. I can I can't really see Essendon winning this game. I, they will have a bit of a response. I wouldn't be too surprised if they respond a bit after the loss last week against the Gold Coast, where they should have won the game. I mean, that was an embarrassment, really. But I still think Sydney kind of found their form late in that game. And I'll be interested to see how Essendon try to combat the stars of Sydney like Heaney and Warner and that. But I just think Sydney found that spark that they needed. They needed to get a win, just something to give them a little bit of this re-spark back into their season. And I feel like that's what they needed. So I think this will be a close game. Historically, Sydney v Essendon have been pretty close. But I'm, I'm leaning towards the Swans on that one. Another massive game, GWS versus Fremantle. This is almost an elimination final for the Dockers. I've gone the Giants, though. I think they, they're hard to pick pick against at the moment. They've had some slow starts, which could worry them. But against the Dockers, I don't think it will. The Fremantle are the lowest scoring uh, team inside the top eight. So even if Fremantle get out to a good lead early, the Giants will be able to peg them back, I believe. If, if Giants start this one well, this game's done. Freo won't be able to catch back. I don't see it. GWS look too good, too strong. So I think that's where it's going to be won. Uh, GWS as well, their forward line's looking so good at the moment without even Toby Green really firing. So I think that's something that the Giants have to get going, though, going into finals. They have to get their captain involved. But other than that, I think GWS are playing brilliant footy, and they're such a good team to watch. So that's kind of where I'm leaning for on that one. Collingwood against the Brisbane Lions. This one's such a tough one. If this wasn't at the MCG, this would be Brisbane every single day of the week. But because it's at the MCG, grand final rematch. The only reason really why I've gone Collingwood here is because it's at the MCG. Brisbane, I think they were good last week, but they just couldn't put GWS away early enough. And that's why the Giants ran over the top of them. I think that's not the worst thing in the world, though. Obviously, we've talked about teams in the past um, having really good form and then having a loss which they kind of need. Uh, I think this is a loss that Brisbane kind of needed going into finals. I still think they'll make the top four, which is a good sign for them. Um, but yeah, I think they needed that loss just to you know realize what sort of problems they were having. The things that were getting covered over when they were winning games, will we get more spotlight onto it? But because this is at the MCG, that's the only real reason. I think Brisbane... Uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised if Brisbane win this game by any means. But being at the MCG... Collingwood, I feel like they got to respond after last week. Craig McRae's surely got to do something. He can't just sit there and whinge all day. So I think he's got, to, <laughs> he's got to find a game plan to get Collingwood to win this one. I think Collingwood can win it, and that's why I kind of tipped them. After that, we have the Crows and Port Adelaide. This is a Port Adelaide home game for the showdown. Port Adelaide last week absolutely had to slug it out against the Demons, but they did what they had to do, and they did it well. The Crows, they obviously won really well against the Bulldogs, and so this really sets up for both teams being in decent form. I think the Crows, even though Taylor Walker probably will be out because he's got his eye injury. I still think the Crows are going to be a little bit more stronger here. The Crows' tools have always been an issue for Port Adelaide the last couple of years. Still thought back into this team is going to be really strong, really hard to beat. Fogarty's in decent form as well. He kicked five goals on the weekend in Port Adelaide. Their form is the only reason why I'm considering changing my tip to Port Adelaide right now because Every single other thing is telling me, go the Crows here because they've got a better record. Their tall forwards obviously have dominated Port Adelaide's defense in the past. The only reason why I'm considering Port is their hot form at the moment. And they haven't been dropping off, which is what we've what I've expected. Now, this may be the game where they drop off. Who knows? That's kind of what I'm leaning for there is the Crows to win this one. It's usually a three or four goal game, usually in the showdown. So that's where I'm kind of leaning for. But I think this is going to be a big game though. Big showdown coming up. And if the Crows do want to put some dampeners on a Port Adelaide top four finish, this will be a game for them. This may be their last grand. This may, may be their grand final for the Adelaide Crows. And then the final game I wanted to take a look at is the danger game I wanted to take a look at is the St. Kilda game up against Geelong. I actually think this is a big danger game for Geelong because so the last couple of weeks, the, the Cats have been lucky enough to get over the top of teams like the Crows. They could have lost that game in Fremantle. Freo were in front for a lot of it, but the Cats just pegged them back in the last quarter. So I feel like the Cats, they're either going to go two ways here. They're either going to smash St Kilda and get themselves primed for finals, or they're going to drop off and let the Saints have a bit of a go. I think it is going to be the, the former. I think Geelong are just going to flog them. But I do think there is a chance here that St Kilda 
get up for this game. Try and, you know, top, take out a big team and knock Geelong off their pedestal that they've been on for the last couple of weeks. Because they nearly lost to the Crows and they nearly lost to Fremantle. So I think there's only two ways this can go. But... I'm going to pick the Cats. I feel like it's really hard to go against them at the moment. They are in really good form, and they are still winning games, even though they're not, you know, demolishing teams. But let's move to our AFL tipping comp. We, of course, forgot to do this one last week as we didn't get the tips done. But looking at it, everyone really had a tough week. I only got two. That is embarrassing. How did I only get two, bro? Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't have a very good week. What did I get in the end? I got, what, far out. I didn't get any, did I? I got, oh my god, I got Hawthorne, and I got St Kilda, oh my god, I had zero to Sunday, that's embarrassing for me. Now of course, as we have all expected throughout the whole year, Brendan is still on top, he did get pegged back by one tip this week, Paul did get one back on him, but he's still six tips in front of second, Harvey is in third, my brother's had a couple of good weeks, he's jumped into fourth, equal fourth spot on 120, oh no, equal third spot my brother is right now, I've dropped down to eighth, but only one tip behind um, third spot. And the top uh, scorer this week was Larnish. They got six tips. A really good job from them. They jumped all the way from, oh, what is it? Nearly bottoms. Oh, I wouldn't have been bottom. Would have been close to bottom, though. So they jumped up all the way to 10th spot. So that's a really good job from them. And Daniel's dropped down to the bottom. I've said his name a few times this year. Hasn't been on the bottom all the time. Jumped back a couple of tips to get equal bottom with Johnny, the evolutionized, but he's still in bottom spots. It's really unfortunate for them. But Brendan S. still leads the tipping comp by six tips. So it's really unfortunate that he's not really giving anyone else a chance. I feel like it's really really uh, mean from him, but nonetheless, he still leads it. (laughs) 